Welcome again friends. In this particular video we will be talking about the structure and function of major histocompatibility complex or MHC. Now before we begin our discussion we must know what is major histocompatibility complex and why it is called uh, as major histocompatibility complex. The first thing is that sorry this name suggests all that means major histocompatibility complex or major histocompatible. Now it means actually uh, for example there are different uh, type of cells inside our body. Now those cells will possess some type of tissue specificity. For example that is uh, my tissues or the s tissue that I am possessing in my body is having a particular specificity towards uh, its own tissues than the other. So the cell inside our body for example the blood cells like white blood cells are having a specificity towards those tissues. Now if we put, if, if you put uh, my own blood uh, cells into the tissue and, to re and you give the time for the reaction then they won't uh, counter attack each other because they can recognize each other as their own unit and if you put uh, blood from another body and insert it into my body. In those cases what will happen is that the stereotype of the blood or stereotype of any kind of tissue region, it could be blood, it could be other type of tissue. Now whatever tissue we are giving and putting it into an another individual, it is going to provide, it is going to create a hell of a mess because those tissue will be specific for that only the host person. But the new person where you are entering the tissue will not have uh, the specificity or those tissue are not compatible with this new host. Okay, so that is called the histocompatibility. Histological means the tissue specificity and con compatibility means whether it is compatible or not. Now cells and tissues are having particular sets of uh, regions inside them which is uh, determining this uh, region of specificity so those those uh, complex structures inside the cells are called major histocompatibility complex now there are two different types of major histocompatibility complex that are found in uh, the white blood cells not only white blood cells in all the cells inside our body one is uh, of class 1 type another one is of class 2 type Okay. Now the class 1 type MHC can be found vigorously in all the living cells inside our body. All the nucleated cells inside our body. But on the other hand, class 2 type of MHC protein can only be found or only be presented by only the antigen presenting cells or APCs. We know that. Right? We have previously discussed what APCs are. Now these APCs uh, can can take up bacteria or pathogens which uh, engulf our which engulfed into our body. So they'll grab them and chew them up, and they hold on to the antigen that they get, and it, they present it to other cells for the destruction. Now these are called the antigen presenting cells. Now those antigen presenting cells, like macrophages, like dendritic cells, and also like B cells. So they can. Uh, have this class 2 MHC molecules or simply class 2 molecules but uh, they are also having class 1 because class 1 can be found in all the nucleated cell inside our body. Now if we look at the structure of class 1 and class 2 MHC molecules what you can find. Now here it is uh, the class 1 MHC molecule. Now the difference, uh, we will be seeing the difference, it will help us to memorize things. Now in this case uh, the class 1 molecule but we can find that this class 1 molecule is having, it is made up with only one uh, type of chain mainly, it is alpha. But still a beta chain is there, but beta chain is pretty small in case of this. So it is made up with one alpha chain, it is having three different domains, alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3. Now alpha 3 domain is, in, is extended and finally it makes another transmembrane segment into the membrane which hold this protein onto the membrane or to the surface of the cell membrane. On the other hand it is having a small small domain of beta microglobulin. Now this beta microglobulin can come and attach to this alpha 3 region and it will link with alpha 3 region in this case. Now these domains, this alpha and beta domains are resembling the structure of microglobulin 
uh, or immunoglobulin domain okay now they are having disulfide linkages in between the structures okay so this is uh, the class 1 molecule but class 2 molecules are uh, having a two embedding structure or the transmembrane region or transmembrane segment we have seen in case of class 1 uh, only one uh, but in case of class 2 molecule it is having two a double transmembrane segment instead of one and also uh, there are two different types of uh, chain alpha and beta two different types of microglobulin two alpha alpha 1 and alpha 2 microglobulin and uh, one beta 1 and beta 2 microglobulins both of them are attached with each other and uh, extension is called uh, the transmembranic region which is embedded into the cell membrane and they will hold uh, these structures together in case of class 1 molecule uh, it is uh, ready for binding with the self type of peptides now in each of the cases now you need to understand the basics of this class 2 or class 1 MHC molecule now what is the basis of providing this MHC molecules onto the surface of the cell the answer is that you need to bind with uh, the, the polypeptides not the small peptide sequences or the small protein sequences after chewing it off now class 1 MAC molecules are destined to bind with the self type of the self type of molecules on the other hand class 2 type of MAC molecule are destined to bind with uh, non self type of or foreign type of so non self so you can write non self type of so those molecules which are not provided by its own body can bind with the MHC class 2 molecule. On the other hand, the, those uh, polypeptide sequences or short polypeptide sequences that are provided by its own body can bind with class 1 molecule of MHC. Okay, so this is the basic fund of class 1 and class 2 MHC molecule. Now, another important thing is that uh, inside our uh, cell, there is a chromosome and I, I forget the exact... Uh, number of chromosome where it uh, where the MHC genes are actually placed but the thing is uh, the inside those chromosomes uh, during the zygote formation remember we get uh, one copy from our father one copy from our mother so we are having a locus and inside this locus so we can have more than one locus for this kind of genes actually in case of class 1 we are having more than one and in case of class 2 we are also having more than one locus for this gene now uh, more than one like locus it will have uh, two or uh, different version of the gene so so the combination will result in variety of different class 1 and class 2 molecules inside a single cell okay so if we uh, just look into the next slide we can find it here now you can find in case of sorry sorry for the detail in case of this human uh, complex uh, of this MHC molecules, we can find that um, uh, MHC class 2 and class 1. In case of class 1, what we can find, we are having three different locus here in our chromosome. Now, uh, here inside this chromosome, locus A, B, and C. Now, each of these different places, there are two different genes, uh, two different uh, uh, alleles for that they will recombine with themselves they can rearrange themselves so how many times they can recombine and rearrange themselves using the permutation and combination we can tell for the three different locus it could be possibility of making six different types of or six unique type of mac1 molecules okay so what we can get from here we can get six individual unique type of mac1 molecule placed in the cells Okay, placed in, in a place surrounding the surface of the cells. Okay. On the other hand, in case of MHC class 2 molecules, it is having three different locus. But in case of these three different locus, when one is getting from a father, another one is from the mother. So what we can get from here is that instead of this age, uh, complex one or MHC1, in case of MHC1, we are mostly dealing with this alpha chain remember the alpha domain because the mostly functional domain of for mhc1 is its alpha domain so uh, it is though it is having a small beta 2 microglobulin domain but this beta 2 microglobulin domain plays no function in the peptide binding 
I repeat, the small beta 2 microglobulin domain of the MHC1 molecule plays no function in the polypeptide binding. So we don't bother about the functionality of this beta 2 microglobulin. Probably it's, it is uh, proving the structural integrity, that's all. Nothing else uh, can be done by this beta 2 microglobulin. Okay, so we need, need not bother about that. But because we are having only alpha region to bind with the peptide molecules, remember? But in case of, so just change the color. In case of class 2 molecules, uh, the peptide binding cleft is this one. And this peptide binding cleft uh, is actually made up with two regions. One is alpha 1, another one is beta 1. So, what we are having here, we are having both alpha 1 and beta 1. So, two types of chains are there. One is alpha type, another one is beta type. So that's why you need to worry about this part of our discussion. Now, if we come here, then you can find. In case of MHC1, we are dealing with only alpha chain. So, alpha chain, three different locus, two alleles. So, you have a combination with six different types. Okay, it's fine. But in case of MHC class 2 molecule, again, we are having three different locus. But these three different locus, each three different locus, one is for alpha, another one is for the beta. So, the locus DP will correspond to one for alpha, one for beta. DQ locus for alpha and beta. DR is also for alpha and beta. So, each locus we are having one for alpha, one for beta. So, already we are having six. Now, one is from the father, another one is from the mother. So, two different alleles are there again. So, the combination now will be six for alpha and also six for beta. So, ultimately, we'll have 12 different unique combinations of MHC class 2 molecules that can be presented by the cells. In, in their whole surface area. Okay, so, so we can have six different or unique type of MHC1. Uh, so, if we having a cell, we are having six, six different, so let me change the color first. So, this blue colored thing is a MHC1. So, this is MHC1. This is another MHC1. So, six different types. So, this is a different type. Say, this is the different type. So, this like this, this is a, there are six different types of MHC1, but actually the number of MHC1 will be, uh, say, a thousand a number of MHC1 surrounding a single cell, right? Similarly, similarly, we are having 12 unique type of, so 12 unique type of, so these are all unique type of MHC2 molecules surrounding the cell. So 12 unique types of but again, the number of MHC2 molecules will be in, in greater amount. It will be greater, right? Okay. So, here it is. Uh, it is uh, actually demonstrated. Now, you can find here, in case of uh, class 1 molecules, we are having these variations. And in case of MHC2 uh, molecules, we are having this, this set of variations. Okay. Onto the surface of the cells. Now here uh, let's talk about the processing of the molecules by MHC molecule, uh, processing of these uh, peptides by these MHC molecules. Now before going into that, we must know uh, how and what is uh, the actual uh, type of arrangement that is going on between these MHC molecules and the peptide. Now remember the structure we have discussed before uh, in, the in the previous slides. So here is the structure. Here is the peptide binding cleft. Remember this is the peptide binding cleft. In this particular peptide binding cleft, uh, you must add the peptide. Now, what kind of peptide I can add it? Now, these peptides must have a particular length which is needed for this attachment to have a perfect affinity. Okay. Now, what is it? Now, let us concentrate here. Now, it is uh, focused or it is, it is seen uh, that uh, most of the cases, if the peptide length is from 7 to 9, it is the best fit. Uh, for the attachment of this peptide with this MHC1 molecules. Okay, so it is from the 6 to 9. If it is uh, only 7 uh, peptide long, so let us begin with 7. So 1, 2, 3, it will be 4, then 5, then 6, 7, 8, 9. So it will be 9. Now, uh, so it's not, say, sorry, I've uh, talked to you wrong, that it is not 7 to 9, it is actually, uh, so 9 is the lowest one, right? Now, if it is uh, greater than 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, again, 
so it, it, it if it is nine or, or slightly seven to nine yeah i was right i was just saying seven to nine so a little bit of fumbling there so don't bother about that so actually if it is a little bit like nine uh, i mean i said long uh, it it was shown that this kind of peptides can have a highest affinity for getting fit onto this MAC1 uh, binding cleft or peptide binding cleft. Now, not only that, but also this is uh, enzyme. This is amino acid specific. For example, it is, if it is having a, a glutamine acid at the position number two, and also uh, so if if it is having this kind of constant region throughout the sequence, it is helping it. For the proper binding. Okay. Now let us look at the process of MHC molecule processing or uh, the process of peptide processing by the MHC1 as well as MHC2 molecules. Now, one thing is a mistake in this picture that the, this picture suggests that is the processing MHC1 molecule. Yeah, it is given here in this picture, but I uh, need to talk about it uh, much more detail. So I will focus on to the next slide for that. So We'll be talking this MAC1 molecule. So this is about, so let us change the color. This is about MAC1 molecule processing. This is about MAC2 molecule processing. Now for the MAC1 molecule processing, what happens? We are having class 1 MAC molecule and it is an alpha chain, for example, because uh, most of, of the part of the MAC1 molecule is made up with the alpha chains, alpha 1, 2, and 3. Now along with that, did that a uh, uh, helper protein called calnexine will come now calnexine will associate with class 1 mac alpha chain and this this class 1 mac alpha chain previously was a partially folded protein now this calnexine calreticulin these things are chaperone like proteins so the, what they can do they can guide the proteins for the proper folding so this calnexine will help this class 1 uh, the mm, class 1 MHC molecule or partially folded class 1 MHC molecule to be properly folded then beta 2 microglobulin portion came in and joined with them and then what will happen they are having more supporter proteins like tapacine and calreticulin now this tapacine and calreticulin will come and bind with it to make a total uh, peptide loading complex now this peptide loading complex is very very important it is made up with calreticulin tapacine and associated class 1 MHC molecule as long as or as as soon as they produce this peptide loading complex then only peptides can be chopped out so the peptides can be chopped out using proteasome system remember every cell uh, in this this case they are having the proteasome system so what we, they can do they can take these peptides and they will chop these peptides off into smaller pieces now the pieces could be from uh, say 9 amino acid long say 13 amino acid long say 20 amino acid long or say 2 amino acid long but it is having a particular affinity for the binding of those peptides. Now, if the peptide length is 9, or if the, if the peptide length is 7 to 9, it is a bit best fit. So, these kind of things are always going on. And a particular fit or perfect fit can come and attach with it. Okay. Now, when a perfect match is done, it will be attached. And as soon as it attaches, very first place, calnexin will move out. Then, tapacine and calreticulin will move out and then only we end up with forming the structure having the class 1 MHC molecule alpha chain attached with one small beta 2 microglobulin segment uh, still the function of this beta 2 microglobulin segment is not clear but it is pretty clear though that this beta 2 microglobulin is not helping in the binding of this protein okay then the structure will be ex exported from this endoplasmic reticulum and they will be docked onto the surface of the cell membrane okay so this is the processing of the class 1 MHC molecules now if you look at class 2 MHC molecular structure what it can be that this is the class 2 but class 2 molecules are having both alpha and beta now this alpha beta uh, as they are made up with alpha and beta, uh, both of them uh, are previously previously made, readily made. But in this case, what happens? A cellular protein structure called the invariant chain will block the peptide binding cleft of this alpha beta interface. Okay, why it is blocking it? Because in case of class 
two MHC molecules. These molecules are destined to bind with or to, to provide the degraded part of the pathogen peptide. So if there is no pathogenic infection, but still inside the cell, there is always the proteasome degradation work is going on. So it may be possible that uh, the some part of, of, of its own body peptides can easily be determined or can easily be attached with this peptide binding cleft of this class 2 MHC and they can be presented. So if they present their own uh, molecule instead of uh, presenting the pathogenic one, the other uh, other cells of immune immune system like T cells, like B cells, and like micro macrophages, all these cells get baffled and they will start killing their own cells. So it will be an autoimmune response. So they don't need to focus onto that. That's why to get rid of this autoimmune activity onto their own. That's why they need to block this peptide binding cleft with this peptide called clip or class 2 associated invariant or chain peptide molecule okay now this this molecule is there so um, rest of this part was degraded instead of a small peptide that can attach to the actual peptide binding cleft now this, the the length of this peptide is similar just the length for the proper binding now what will happen this mechanism ensures two different things. One is that that the first thing that no, not the self peptides can bind. Second thing is that that this ensures the proper amount or the proper binding of uh, the new pathogenic peptide. Because if the pathogenic peptide is not uh, good enough or it is not a good affinity for the binding with this this particular clip molecule, then it cannot replace clip. So actually, after this process, when the pathogen enters, they start engulfing the pathogen and chewing the pathogen out, producing small pathogenic peptides. Now this peptide must remove this clip to finally incorporate itself to the position of the peptide binding cleft of MHC class 2 molecule. Okay, so they must eliminate it. They must, uh, so this is a race between clip as well as between this uh, newly uh, chewed out segment of pathogenic peptide for the attachment with this peptide binding clef. Okay, For this purpose to be established, it needs another helper molecule. It is called HLADM. Okay. Now this molecule it is a chaperone molecule just like in this case of uh, for the loading of peptide in case of this MAC1 molecule there is a protein complex there which is helping this process to happen. It is called the TAP complex. Okay, we can find this picture here. Yeah, this is the complex. We can find that this is the TAP complex. So it's a channel-like structure, which which helps this protein to be in, in to to get in inside uh, the ER lumen from the cytoplasm. Because most of the protein degradation, in fact, all the protein degradation work that are being carried out are uh, inside the cytoplasm via the proteasome system. So that's why after the proteasome system work. And produce a small peptides it must carry the peptides via some channel and place them into the ER lumen and that can be done via this tap transporter on the other hand in this case the HLADM is actually helping uh, this uh, class 3 MHC molecule to achieve the newly chewed out segment of amino acid and replacing the clip or previously attached or associated peptides okay so this is the processing of MAC class 2 molecules okay now here comes the interaction between T cells and APC cells we don't actually need to learn about that in much detail but let us look at it because uh, class 2 and class 1 MAC molecules are attached here so for what happens in the very first place is that the internalization of the antigen or the pathogen then what happens the altered self cell antigen presentation happens now in this case what will happen here if the pathogen is engulfed and it is chewed out so what can do so here for example say in case of class 2 MAC molecules because class 2 only can bind with the non self type so the pathogen antigen can be presented by class 2 MHC molecules to the T helper cells. On the other hand, in case of class 1 MHC molecule, it never shows this uh, this self uh, uh, it never shows this pathogenic antigen. Instead, it will show its own antigen or self antigen to the surface. 
okay then t cells will come and attach to them now one type of t cell will attach to the class 2 mhc molecules and then it can uh, look for it and it can start producing chemical mediators this chemical mediators will amplify some other type of or can can notify some other type of immune cells now those immune cells could be macrophages which are the phagocytic cells it could be b cells which are the factories for production of immunoglobulin to fight the infection okay or to fight the antigenic uh, eruptions okay now in case of this other hand portion it produces this uh, this is a cell called TC cell or cytotoxic cells. Now, what these cells can do? These cells will have a signal that yes, this we need to kill the cell because the cell is presenting the foreign peptide. But in this case, via the MHC class one molecule, it is providing is providing the self molecule. Now, if it is providing the self molecule, they will scan through the, the cytotoxic cells can can look for that via the, some attachment proteins. And if it founds everything is okay, it's a self peptide, then the cell will be selected and the cell will leave. But if it found that the cell is a guilty one, the cell cannot uh, respond to uh, its activity. In those cases, they will kill the cell by pro providing some of the chemical components. Okay. And the cell will die. This is a process of happening. Now, what will happen in case of this T helper cells? On the other hand, who is interacting with the class two MHC molecules? Now, this T helper cells, these cells will start producing chemical mediators, which will in turn contribute to the activation of B cells and also activation of cytotoxic T cells or this type of cells. Okay. Now, these cells will come and kill the host cells where the pathogen is actually infecting us okay so this is a process now it's also activating the b cells b cells are among the humoral response remember we have talked about the different types of response now these b cells are producing antibodies now those antibodies can go and bind with the antigen of the pathogen and then can kill the pathogen okay now uh, the receptor through which this uh, these T cells are actually attached with the same HC molecules are called T cell receptors. For example, this, this brown color thing here is a T cell receptor. So this is a type of TCR. So the interaction between the host cells, a host cell class 1 MHC or host cell class 2 MHC with T cells is established between the T cell receptor and MHC molecules. On the other hand, in case of uh, the link up between this host cells with the B cells it is with the help of B cell receptors okay the structure of this T cell re receptors are given here it is just like the immunoglobulin structure so we can find the immunoglobulin typical immunoglobulin fold now what do you mean by a typical immunoglobulin fold it's a common structure a uh, long stretch of a polypeptide chain attached via Sing disulfide linkages. Now you can find several uh, different uh, regions having this disulfide bridges holding them together. So we can call them. So we can call them. Sorry, uh, immunoglobulin-like folds. Okay, so we are looking at this immunoglobulin-like fold structures. Okay. Now here it is a proper interaction is shown here. Now between an APC means the antigen presenting cell and a T cell, how complicated the interactions are actually. Now MHC molecules will be attached with the T cell receptor. So this is the first kind of reception. But this reception is not enough. So what we need to do, we need to have a lot of different side interactions to actually ensure that this attachment has done properly. For that, we are having the interaction between B7 and CD28. So these are the protein attachments or protein uh, <laughs> molecules that are coming out from the surface of the cell. CD28 from the T cell, B7 from the APC, and again uh, CD58 from the APC and also CD2 from uh, this uh, T cell, and also CD40 from APC and CD40 L or CD40 ligand. From this T cell. Now you can find this is a CD4 T cell 
CD4 T cell is also called the TH cell. We have seen the picture above here. This is called TH cell or this is also called CD4 cell. So let me write. This is also called CD4 cell. In case of TC cells, this is also called CD8 cells. Or it is also called cytotoxic T killer cell. Okay. Cytotoxic killer cell. Okay. So here is the kind of interaction you can find here. Suppose this is an antigen, this is the MHC molecule of antigen presenting cell. So this is the APC which is presenting this antigen to the T cell. The T cell is interacting it via the T cell receptor. But this interaction is not enough for the proper determination, proper signaling or the proper future events. For that to happen it must attach with several side reactors and among them most important one is a CD4 or CD8. If it is a CD4, then this T cell is a T helper type T cell, which will call upon other cells for the uh, remedy of the situation. Or uh, if it is, it is a T CD8 a receptor is present, then this cell would be called the cytotoxic cell or killer cell. Now this cell can kill uh, kill this cell by scanning it. Okay. So these are the different types of interaction that can happen between the antigen presenting cell and uh, with the T cell. And this is linking the major histocompatibility complex with each other. Okay, so that's it and I hope it will help you. Thank you.